Hey, I'm Steven, and I make fonts as AeroType. I'm continuing this uh, video from the last one. Uh, at the last one, I said, I'll be right back. Actually, uh, something came up, and then I've worked on other things for a couple of days, so I'm right back a couple of days later. But I have 30 minutes, and I am going to try to get a little bit into fixing up the black italic version of name mono here. Um, I'm going to avoid my, um, kind of sudden urge for the most part to start to try to overanalyze this and fix it up a lot. Um, you know, it, not that it's a bad thing really to tr like, okay, this one just does bug me. Um, basically this F is pretty narrow. Like you can sort of see spacing a mono is always a little weird, um, but these look tighter than this, and this looks tighter than this. So at the very least, I'm going to kind of, oops, um, try to make them a little more even. And I'm kind of looking down here, actually, as I'm going. But yeah, funny thing for monos is that sometimes you do this sort of thing, and then you uh, like you start using it, and you realize that sometimes the narrow characters work better if they look narrow. So like an example of a character that's narrow, and I found tends to like benefit from extra space is like the the v or the c i mean this one's pretty much totally off center so that's not great in fact let me fix that with uh monospace selected glyphs equal to width of n okay so that is just a simple script it's on my github if you want it but it sets the width to m and uh tries to make it even and uh Now it's now it's even. Um, I guess. Wow, the bottom really isn't even. That's funny. There's probably a good way to measure things in glyphs. I really like the RoboFont measuring tool a little more because um, you like. Just kind of draw on guidelines, and then they're there. Um, can I turn measurements on for? See, it doesn't go to the side bearing, which is annoying. Hmm. Well, if uh, somebody's watching this and it's painful, um, let me know in the comments. Uh, but the main thing I want to do now. Uh, last time we kind of went through this, and did a very quick fix up of the. Uh, upright alphabet. Well, the next thing I want to do is to uh, fix the italic alphabet. Oops. I don't know, something like that looks a little better to me. So where are we at here? So you can see that it's um, obviously a mess. These just haven't been fixed up at all other than their widths being all 1,200 uh, units. So first thing we need to do is I'm going to fix the, uh, what am I saying, the H and O. And if I just put this maybe in the background and I slant it, I think the slant is to 11.31. Oh my gosh. Degrees. Um, and let's get the side bearings more or less equal.
Okay, so now, I mean, I might just run with that even, but let's let's see how closely these align. Okay, so it's exactly, yeah, exactly that, basically. I, I was wondering if uh, just skewing the upright version, whether that would adjust the stem thickness. Sometimes you would, sometimes you wouldn't. My rationale actually for not adjusting the stem thickness is, and I did slightly adjust this horizontal thickness, but the rationale for not adjusting the th stem thickness when I slanted name sans, for instance, is that if you have a rectangle and you skew it, you're still going to have the exact same surface area of that rectangle just tipped. Um, and my thought process, my theory uh, that I think is pretty rational is, um, and I, I feel like it works nicely, uh, is that as long as you have approximately the same surface area in your vertical strokes, then it should be pretty well matched in color. Um, of course, there's like, you know, differences for how pixels or ink are going to specifically fill in those shapes. And that I'm sure causes some changes, but um, on the whole, I feel like it uh, mostly works out. Uh, let's see. So what we have to be a little more careful on is the O because if we just skew this and leave it be, um, that looks pretty silly. Uh, it like looks very pointy here and here at the bottom left and top right, and then very um, kind of flattened at the top left and bottom right. So what we want is something that looks more really rotated. I've talked about this in a previous video, actually. Um, probably what I'll do since this is already kind of fixed, is let's roughly match the, uh, so this is 76 units in the side bearing. Let's get to there and then match it on this side and try to use the uh, control option nudges. Uh, what am I doing? Okay. and see how close that will get us. And I'm sure we'll have more fixing to do. I'm gonna put an O right next to it so I can sort of better see my progress. So that's actually getting there. Um, basically, I wanna bring this up further and these up further. And that's starting to look okay at the top. Um, and then I think I'll probably just kind of reflect it. We'll see how that goes. Hmm. I'm like holding option sometimes to shift this point without shifting the off curve. Yeah, it doesn't quite look right, but I'm sure I'll just kind of have to uh, take a few passes and then I'll I'll make my way to what is right seeming. Well, let's reflect it and then let's see what the, what the best way is. I'll slice this, delete that, copy paste this, rotate it 180 degrees, pop it down here, kind of match that, and then I'll match the edges roughly. And then I'm going to Command Shift O to remove the overlap and then delete these little jaggies there. Yeah, it doesn't look perfect, but uh, I'll mess with it more. It's like good enough for spacing. 
for the most part. Um, my brain is still a little slow this morning. Oh gosh, um, this has to be quite a bit narrower. I should do H H O H O. -O. Oh, what am I even thinking? I'm trying to remember my logic here. I guess I'm trying to make sure these things match. So this could get a smaller side bearing for sure. I always tell people that it's really, really worth setting up your keyboard shortcuts and learning them uh, for glyphs spacing. Because if you don't do that, then it's not just a matter that keyboard shortcuts are faster, it's like that you're able to get into a much better flow state in uh, spacing and like actually see what's happening in a much better way. And the goal is to see what's happening. Something that bugs me about glyphs so much is that the thing I'm trying to see at the bottom here is very seldom actually centered. And I, I guess maybe when you make it big enough, it does. I don't know. I haven't quite figured that out, but so often I'm trying to look for reference and it's not there again any uh any people in the comments know the solution let me know yeah honestly sometimes the o is like one of the most challenging letters in a typeface the o and the c cuz like they seem like they should be so easy but they're easy to look at and think, oh, that looks wrong. But they're not easy to draw in a way that avoids that. <laughs> Especially, and then the problem is made greater when it's italic, for sure. All right, so let's see. We'll match this to the O. Oh no, I had, uh, I gotta make sure it's the same width. So, um, repeat. Yeah, okay, now it's good again. And it's uh, monospaced again. We will make it properly monospaced. All right, so I'm just going to run that filter again and again. In fact, let me just run it on everything. And, ooh, that, I'm gonna, does that not, oh god, I, no. Okay, that was a silly instance where I should have saved and then run a script. And if it didn't go well, I should have honestly saved, committed, run a script, and then like been able to back out. Um, because this is turning on auto alignment for everything. And I think that messes with everything. Anyway, I know that I have to correct all of these and probably many of these things. So I guess it's not a huge issue, <laughs> but that would have been really frustrating if I was, if I were further along, uh, for now. Oh, it did, did it. Okay. I don't know. I am going to do it to the basic Latin at least. Um, All right, let's run this. You can see that that shifted everything into the middle of its space, even if it didn't, you know, make it narrow as it will need to be. Great example here. Um, to be honest, I think I will start by skewing this one. Um, and 
I mean, the M is always going to look kind of silly in a mono. But we can make it slightly less silly. Maybe. I don't know. We'll roll with it for now. All right. So let's, uh, what is it? Control command M to fix the metrics. And now we have to make this narrower as well. So let's say we want about um, 55 or 52 units. This is looking a little off. Oh, and it's, did I never fix this one? Wow, uh, short attention span today. All right, let's, um, let's fix this first. Okay, we want it to be about 110. And that will make our counter really pretty narrow. Yeah, it looks a little odd, but I think it's fine. I might cheat a little bit and move that in. I don't know, we'll see. I might have to like Make this notch a little smaller at the bottom to make it kind of look a little less of a severe cut here. Something that you don't really notice in a mono or in an italic is that like there sort of has to be a thicker stroke here than here to make it look at all balanced. If you try to keep them the same thickness, um, and this is true in like. Um, even in proportional fonts. So like if you try to um, keep them the same stroke thickness here and here, you'll just get a huge white space there and a very tiny white space there. So in Name Sans, what I really tried to do is um, kind of strike the balance between stroke modulation and keeping these white spaces even. And along with the like weirdness that you have to think through to get characters to not look like they were skewed, but more kind of italic, whatever that means, um, that's one of the challenges to figure out in the design of, a, uh, of an italic. Okay, we're gonna run with it for now. So 110.54. Come to think of it, half an hour of fixing an italic in public is like, almost a nightmare because <laughs> it just takes so much longer. Um, so I may, I don't know. Do I, I'll probably publish the video. Well, this still looks like trash. Um, ugh, that pee is so painful. Why? Yeah, the experience of working on an italic it's really something. I think probably most people have things that they have to do that make them feel like imposters or whatever. Working on italics is sometimes that, um, or really just working on any new type style, like a mono italic, especially a black mono italic. It just kind of, um, 
takes a minute for your eyes to like essentially adjust and be able to work on the thing in a useful way. It's, at least for me. So I'm just trying to see if I can get these bowls to be more symmetrical as well. That's kind of a goal in name stands. Just because I think it's kind of fun and cool. So maybe I will uh fun and cool and I think it matches the the spirit of the typeface. I should definitely add that. Um, where is curve EQ? I really like this balance handles thing. It uh, makes things interpolate better and just look subtly better a lot of the time. So I'm just going to straight up copy this counter between the A and B because I do want them to be the same level and size and everything. So. You know, if you're seeing a, a line of text, they should theoretically light up the same amount of pixels. Um, that does. Make this look a little big somehow. Let's see, from there to there is 290, from there to there is 274. Oh, wow. So maybe these were offset for a reason. I don't think I want them to be in this case. Wait, so 284, 280, so we need this to be there. So it's 282 on both. So what happens if we copy this back? Yeah, I think that looks reasonably okay. Yeah, kind of like that, I think looks okay. Well, we'll run with it. <laughs> uh, for now, I'm going to leave the C alone. Oh, God. Now we have the D to fix. Oh, but I can kind of cheat a little bit starting with the a let's see how well will this work we'll have to change that but otherwise i think it'll be okay so i'm gonna make a layer in case i want to get back to that open that up by option oops option delete and we're going to kind of, oh, let's move this over. So it's kind of at the right spot. And uh, then we'll open up our A. Let's see, there, that docked the bottom, and then we simply need to uh, control option drag, there, okay, not too bad, looks mostly okay, and then thank goodness we can sort of, I wonder if I uh, do, what is it, command shift R, well, it will it interpolate? Okay, that that fixed the interpolation. 
it kind of just puts start points at a consistent place such that things will generally become compatible for interpolation. So that's pretty useful. Oh, I forgot something that it was doing for the italic A here. It was kind of giving it a little tail so that it um, just has that little bit of extra differentiation in mono from uh, like an O. So I'm going to try to copy that here. Um, <clears throat> let's see, we had basically just a curve here, and then this goes up. So let's add a couple of points. And I'm just going to do this option click there. Enter to make those smooth. And let's just start by rotating this. So click R, click there rotate we'll start with that that looks bad but then we fix it something like that maybe i don't know A lot of the early design phase of a font is kind of guesswork, and then you have to check how things are actually looking once you've like installed the fonts and started to use them and proof them and yeah, see what they actually act like. But it seems relatively uh, like the right structure. I don't know. We'll call that okay for now. Okay, now we can do. This bit where we uh, rotate the D for the P. Oh, we pop that one in the background for safekeeping. Okay. I think the bowl, I think I'll have to do a couple of extra passes to fix that, to be honest. That's okay. And we've got to correct descenders. So they're not longer than they should be. OK, we will leave the E as is. And we've got to fix the F. So let's just grab our bottom bar. Oh, wait. Haha. <laughs> this has a very different form again. OK. Um, well, then, let's change it. The thrilling excitement of different italic forms. They are pretty fun. I like them. Then this was actually lowered by like uh, around 100 units. Then what did we do here? Yeah, this is a form that I'm trying out. I don't, I don't know for sure if I'll keep it or whatnot, but we'll give it a try. Oh, and then a fun thing I'm doing in this italic is making these ends vertical. And I don't think I had any of those yet, actually. Yeah. OK. And I've gone beyond my self-imposed time limit. So this is the last one I'll do.
Let's do that, even it out. And then I think if you do, what is it? Option, shift, click with the pen tool, it will add it on the extrema, which is nice. You can also like right click and add extremes or maybe it's under add extremes under path. That makes sense. Um, we could probably assign it a shortcut in the Mac uh, preferences. But anyway, this option shift click works pretty well too. Sometimes, oh well, that'll be minuscule. So we might just leave it as is. Shift O to remove that overlap. Okay. Um, so I think those two are probably compatible, and we've still got to fix our uh, light version. But for now, that's maybe all right. I mean, I probably could have rotated that a little more precisely with like uh, 11.31 degrees. Um, let's try something. Let's uh, bring this down, then we'll rotate it and see how it matches. Aha. Okay, so we do want to probably rotate this slightly more. We'll pop this in the background. All right. Well, it's uh, it's something. Okay, you know what? I'm also gonna fix the T just because. That's going to be super sad, fast and very satisfying. I should really write a quick script so I can just do this with a hotkey. And I am actually trying to put this little curve here. So I might end up making this, I should probably just remove the overlap now just to, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm trying these little kind of in strokes. Um, and I kind of want to match them maybe with the T. I normally wouldn't do this form of a T because it's not really the style exactly that I'm using in the name Sans. But I think it, as this is a more scripty, expressive um, italic, and because the point of this family is to be a bit genre bendy anyway, I, I don't know. I'm going to keep trying it for a while and seeing how I feel about it. Let's see. I'm just going to try to like remove the overlap for these three parts and then uh, let's do that rotation thing and then fix it. Although that, hmm, 
that didn't seem to work out. Maybe it needs to rotate only half as much or something. Basically, I want it to be a square. How can I think of this? That's a better guide. And sometimes math isn't the answer. I don't know. That. Yeah. This is too far to the left, I think. It needs to be more centered. Something like that might be good. I don't know. All right, well, pretty fun start. Let me... Um, let me, like... Do word of mat real fast to see if we have anything that looks like anything yet. Just kind of selecting the glyphs that are pretty much right or pretty much adjusted. Yeah, well. It's something. Kind of looks uh, looks like something. I don't know. <laughs> looks like it needs more work, um, but it's coming along. Pretty fun to see. I mean, in a way, it's really slow, but in a way, uh, this is you know the like fun, fast part of a typeface, where like you can do half an hour of work and actually get a reasonable amount into seeing how something will feel and look. And like a black um, italic or black mono like is always going to look kind of wacky just because you've got to do such distortions to make things fit into their uh, units of space. But um, yeah, you can like, let's see if we can see the bold instance that's one of the real things that we're aiming for so wait we want 700 italic we want one and we'll give it the proper weight class this is what i'm actually trying to do um is to see and to get a bold so I can use it in my web design. Oh, I also have to change the name of it, of course. Bold italic. This is the bold and it's italic instance of regular. This is for style linking. Cool. Okay. Maybe we should give it a bold while we're here just so we have that. And why doesn't the tab work? Okay, so, oh, we actually want that to be zero. Okay, cool. So now, let's see. We can see also, oh, well, we can see that there's a lot of incompatibility at the moment, but I will come back and fix that up at a later time. Oh yeah, the G, I have a completely different shape going on. So I'll have to make a black version of that. Yeah, well, we've got some work to do, but uh, you know what, that's, that's part of the joy, so. Um, we will get there. All right. Well, uh, if you watched that, thanks for watching. Hope you're having a great day. If you're working on a font, hope it's going great. If you're working on design of any kind or I don't know, whatever else you're working on, best of luck with it. Thanks for watching.